your silence is complicit in the perpetuation of a system where you benefit and others are purposely disadvantaged. When we look at Tulsa, all of these elements are at play. I would describe the nation must awake as a warning from 1921 to us in 2021 about the dangers of fascism and anti-democratic forces. In 1921, Tulsa was a segregated city. There was an area of town called Greenwood, Black Wall Street, as we've come to know it. It was a thriving uh, business and residential community where Black people ran everything. Over the years, there was dispute about what led to the race massacre, but we now know that the uh, common tale that was told about Dick Rowland, a young shoeshine attacking a white elevator girl, was really more of a pretext for what people wanted to carry out anyway. Some of the city fathers were interested in the land that Black Wall Street sat upon, and some of the poorer whites were subject to economic envy. When Dick Rowland was arrested and there was a threatened lynching, the conflagration began. May 31st was the first night and then into the morning of June 1st when really uh, the worst of the massacre took place. All manner of warfare was unleashed upon the community. The community was torched Burn, kerosene was used to accelerate the flames. In the aftermath of those two days, thousands of people were made homeless. They lost everything. There was no bank in Greenwood. And so people would have kept their cash, their life savings. In a Bible, people lost their family Bibles. Today, we don't understand what that means. Those were some of the only records that people had of their genealogy all the way back into the days of enslavement. This was a devastating loss. Mary Elizabeth Jones Parish was a young mother and she was a teacher. She was not only a witness to the events, a survivor of the events, she was also a reporter who gathered the stories of others. It is the first book to have been published following the race massacre. As the massacre was unfolding, she had to make a decision. The decision was between staying in your home and risk being burned to death or shot in your home. She decided at one point to run into the street with my grandmother and on foot try to escape. Listening to the troubles of others aroused compassion in her own heart and that helped her to deal with her own difficulties. The biggest takeaway of The Nation Must Awake is that it is as relevant today as it was at that time because the issues have not been resolved. Those on the other side of the tracks are descended from those who perpetrated this atrocity. They know who did what and who had what, whose treasures were looted from their homes and brought into their homes. I do support cash reparations for all descendants to some degree, absolutely. Some type of recognition and the naming of those who were involved in perpetrating this horrible crime, almost a war crime. The truth in this country has been under assault and we are having people making efforts to sanitize history so that some people don't have to feel bad about the things that their ancestors did.